Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Bethany and on this channel we talk about the false beliefs taught to women inside of the church and we also shine a lot on problematic Christian influencers. So if any of that resonates with you, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, always share it with a friend and be sure to hit the little notification bell so you will be notified every single time that I drop a new video which has been about two times a week. So you don't want to miss that. And if you would like to receive videos 12 to 24 hours early and also receive exclusive content, please become a patron and the Patreon information is in the description box below. Today we're getting into Mark Driscoll and this whole controversy of him getting kicked off the stage at James River. Okay, if you are not aware of what has been going on, Mark Driscoll, who is a very, very well-known pastor with kind of sketchy past which we're not going to so much get into Mark Driscoll, but there are a lot of controversial things that he's done as a pastor. And if you want to know more about what went on in Mark Driscoll's past, you can listen to The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. That was his church. I think that was his first church that he helped create, I believe. The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. If you want to know more about his controversial past, go listen to that. Again, we're not going to get into it here. All I wanted y'all to know was that Mark Driscoll has a past and a very, very aggressive one at that. So, what had happened was, I didn't even realize it was James River Church. That church is in Springfield, Missouri, which is about two hours away. And if you are not aware where I'm at, Southwest Missouri, this is the Bible Belt, an actual Bible Belt. And in Springfield, that's where all the churches are. That is where the Assemblies of God denomination started. That's where a lot of the Assemblies of God colleges are, Christian colleges are. When my husband left for Christmas break for the two, for the two weeks during boot camp, I was taking him back to the base. We were in Springfield because the base is super close to Springfield. And I was explaining to him like, oh yeah, this is where the youth group, my youth group used to go. This is the pizza place we used to go. It was, it was a lot of memories that were coming up. And he was like, there is a church on every freaking corner. And I was like, oh yeah, like this is, this is the hub of churches. This is the hub of the Bible Belt. This is the actual hub of the denomination of Assemblies of God. This is where it started. And he he just couldn't believe it. He was like, I thought we lived in the Bible Belt. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, this is, <laughs> this is the Bible Belt. You either go do ministry somewhere after high school, or you go to a non-sanctioned college where it literally means nothing, or you go to a Christian college. If you do one of those things because you are called to ministry, you're more highly looked upon, really, in my experience of what I, what I have found. So in saying that, I just wanted to paint a picture of what Springfield kind of looks like. James River is a fairly big church in Springfield. I don't want to call it a mega church because this is still Missouri, right? So it is a fairly big church. And my youth group, when I was a teenager, we we would go to youth retreats at James River. We would go to different things at James River because everything that we did, we went with the Springfield section because we're so close to them. So when I was a teenager, I am very keen to James River. We'd go there all the time. When I heard that this was coming out of James River, I was like, oh my goodness. Okay, whatever. Let me try to explain to you what happened and then we're going to watch some videos on it because I have a few questions. So during, this was a men's retreat at James River and Mark Driscoll was a guest pastor there and they had opening entertainment. One to which was, I don't think, well, I, I do believe he was a former stripper. He wasn't a stripper for this event, but he did have a pole and he was swallowing a sword. And again, we'll watch a video so you can see it better. But 
he swallowed a sword, he climbed up on the pole, and then he came back down, and he had his shirt off through this whole entire thing. Now, in my opinion, is that appropriate for a church? I don't think so. And before that, they had a monster truck rally. They were trying to niche to the men things, right? So out of that, whatever, that's not a big deal. But the problem was this former stripper who took his shirt off in a men's retreat and started climbing up a pole. And why would a group of Christian men want to watch a man gyrate without a shirt on. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not something that I would imagine these guys would want to watch. So, this is where the controversial stuff comes in. Let's watch a short video of what they were watching. It's not the whole performance. It's just little snippets of it. You see him taking his shirt off, putting the sword down his throat, him doing stuff on the pole. It's, it's something that I would imagine a men's retreat, a Christian men's retreat, wouldn't care about. Okay, so that was one of the last performances that they had. Okay, so after the entertainment happened, the pastors were coming out and talking, and Mark Driscoll comes out and he does his sermon. At the end of his sermon, he starts talking about how the conference opened with the spirit of Jezebel. So if you're not familiar, the spirit of Jezebel is a spirit of seduction. So if you're a prostitute, if you are a stripper, if you have anything to do with sex, you have the spirit of Jezebel. If you are cheating on your husband, spirit of Jezebel. You can understand where I'm getting at. He stated that the conference opened with the spirit of Jezebel because a man ripped off his shirt like a stripper would at a strip club. There was a pole that he climbs up on. So that's where this comes, this next video comes into play. It's a little hard to hear. So I'll bump up the volume a little bit, but try to listen closely because this is when he gets kicked off the stage. I've been up since one o'clock in the morning. The reason I'm forced is I have been praying for you and my heart is very burdened. And I want to be very careful with this and it's not what I want to say. But the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. Before the word of God was open, there was a platform. It was a high place. On it was a pole, an asher. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the chest of our spirit to see the spirit. In front of that was a man who ripped his shirt off like a woman does in front of a pole at a strip club. That man then ascended. See, our God is not arrogant. He doesn't ascend like God is humble. He descends. Mm, so good. And then he swallowed a sword. And Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to rewind it here, and I want you to pay attention to the man in the back. That's the pastor saying, you're out of line, Mark, and then he says, you're done, Mark. Just listen to that. God is not arrogant. He doesn't us say that God is humble. He decent. Mm, so good. And then he swallowed the sword. And Jesus cried, okay, Pastor John, I'll receive that. Thank you. So here, these guys are booing that the pastor kicked Mark Driscoll off the stage. They're not booing at Mark Driscoll. They're getting mad at the pastor. Let me just say this. 
I'm pretty sure they're saying bring Mark back. Bring Mark back. So this is the interesting part of this as well, is that this pastor of James River, when he says, you're out of line, you're done, Mark, and then he gets on the stage, he's using the scripture of, if you offend a brother, if you offend somebody in the church, you don't come out publicly and talk about it, you come to them privately and then settle it and then go about your business. That's the scripture that he is using. However, He's kind of being hypocritical because though Mark did not tell him, because he'll go on to say, we talked for 30 minutes before before he came on stage and he said nothing, which I do agree with this pastor because if Mark had an issue with it, he should have gone to the head pastor of the church. I fully support that. However, I do agree that there shouldn't have been that at a men's conference. Anywho, so when he is saying this, in in my opinion, it's also hip- it, it is it is hypocritical because though he's saying Mark should have come to me privately and not said it publicly, he is also doing the same thing, literally yelling from his seat, "You're out of line, Mark. You're done, Mark," and then getting on stage and having him leave the stage. And saying if he had an issue with it, he should have come to me privately. Well, you could have also done that same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like there are if, there are so many hypocritical things going on, but we'll we'll keep going. There was not one word of that. He's out of line. If he wanted to say it, he can say it to me. You may not agree with me. You may not agree with him. But we are brothers in Christ, and there's a right way to handle. And watch somebody do publicly what they should have done privately. And as a pastor and a man of God, I'll call another man of God out. Now, I love Mark, but he was out of line. And I have a responsibility spiritually for this event. And we saw 530 people come to Christ. Okay, so the issue that I have with this whole media frenzy thing is that the whole story wasn't told. So they both came on stage and after all of this, they had privately spoken. We're going to watch this video too. They had privately spoken and they reconciled their relationship, which is great, wonderful, and they both apologize, right? So it's, but here's the thing though. Here's the thing. He's, Mark Driscoll is going to go on to say after the apology, he's going to go on to say that this is the best men's conference that he's ever, you know, he said it is the best men's conference in the country. So here's my, and it is so, it's so crazy because if you even Google right now, Jezebel spirit, if you Google that, this controversy pops up. And if you put in Mark Driscoll on TikTok or Instagram or any social media, mostly TikTok right now, this pops up. So I think I'm a little put my tinfoil hat on here right quick. I kind of think that this might have been a publicity stunt. You let me know what you think. Because he gets kicked off a stage. Well, doesn't get kicked off. He chooses to, whatever. After saying, no, you're done, you're out of line. He chooses to leave. The pastor comes up and says, no, he's out of line, blah, blah, blah. He should have said it to me. Though that could have been handled. All of this could have been handled differently as well. But then they go on to talk on stage with themselves and the pastor of James River 
essentially praises Mark Driscoll for being so outspoken and being such a man of God and having a heart for the Lord. And then Mark Driscoll says, you know, if you were smart, you wouldn't have me here again because, you know, I'm a disruptor, I'm blah, blah, blah. And then the pastor, he says, this is, this is today's John, John the Baptist because he's very outspoken and points and calls things out for what they are. So they're like now praising each other afterwards. And then that's what Mark Driscoll says. This is the best men's conference in the country. And I'm like, wait a second. Was this planned? Like, was this, did they either, it was planned. Okay, three options here. This worked out in their favor, and it's getting a lot of publicity, one. Two, they talked about it and were like, hey, we need to reconcile our relationship. We need to talk about this, and then we can circle back and then talk about the conference and how good it is. Or this was all orchestrated. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's listen to this. We're not going to listen to the whole entire thing, but I have I have a few questions, conspiracies, because again, if you Google Jezebel Spirit, if you look at Mark Driscoll or James River anywhere right now, this this comes up. So was this planned? Mark came here back in 2008. You were riding the the high levels of Christendom in your ministry. Sorry. He was speaking around the country, doing conferences. <laughs> I mean, listen, nobody really, I mean, James Church is a good church, but nobody really knew much about us. You know what I remember about you? You asked what I was preaching on. And the next week, I had a box of books that he mailed to me to help me. I never forgot that. Mark and Grace have been friends through the years. When there was trouble at Mars Hill, Debbie and I sat on our couch in our family room and wept. And you guys have been some of the greatest friends to me and my family through the hardest seasons of our life. And I thank you for being a good pastor and spiritual father. I, I love this guy. I believe in this guy. As we were sitting over there, Mark was talking. You want to know what John the Baptist was like? <laughs> Mark's a prophetic voice to our generation. Nothing about what was said changes that. And I, Mark and I talked. We went outside where we could be alone and we could talk. And we've reaffirmed our friendship. And Mark, I want you to know, you're a gift to the kingdom. You're a gift to James River. You've been a gift to Debbie and I. You've helped us in things. You've been kind to my family, mentored my sons. And I love you. And I, I told Mark, listen, he says, I'll do whatever you want. I said, well, if you're willing, and we can come in and talk, and we'll let him talk to you in a moment. If you're willing, I want you to speak again. I want to find out about Elijah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I honor, respect, and love and admire you as the father of this house. This is the greatest men's event, I believe, in the country right now. It's stayed here for a long time. And I, I want to thank you for having such a great heart for men. And I want to thank you that it starts with your sons. And your sons are great men. I love you and I love your sons. And in, when I was teaching, I just kept seeing that. And maybe it was the Lord and maybe it's just me and I'm peculiar. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not going to do division. What we're going to do is we're going to try and model how brothers can work together. <laughs> I believe what I should have done since I had another session. I was thinking about it. It wasn't in my notes. I didn't 
didn't intend to go there. I was up late praying for the men. I just kept seeing it. And I should have, between sessions, talked to you rather than just verbal processing on the stage. And as the father and the head of the house, you could have given me a thumbs up or down, and I need to honor that as, uh, as spiritual authority. And I honor your spiritual authority. I always have. Um, and so, I apologize to you for not going that route, which would have led us from the most awkward moment in the history of any men's event. <laughs> so, yeah. And I don't, I mean, if I were you, I wouldn't let me speak again. That's something you should pray about. But, um, but Pastor John, um, when I was at the lowest point of my life, um, and I wasn't sure I was ever going to go into ministry again, I thought, if I do go into ministry, I want to do it with my family, with my wife and kids and daughters. So I flew out and I met with you and Debbie, and you sat me down on the couch, and you're like, here's... Here's some thoughts. And we've architected our whole church and ministry in large part on that conversation. And my whole family is blessed. And they're blessed because you and your wife always sit on your couch. So thank you. And I Woo! Love you. Thank you. going to do something. Mark, I feel like, you know, what Satan intends at times for evil, and always division, even over... over I, don't, I don't want division. And, no, and I, no, but yeah. I mean, here's what I'm saying is, what sometimes Christian brothers can feel strongly about things that, and there's a difference. You know, there are some things... Okay, 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 okay. So, I just... I just looked up um i was looking something up and this this video just popped up and i'm so glad that i looked it up so we're going to we're going to watch it not all of it Three. but um Three. this is i've never watched any of this man's videos before he is simply talking about what's going on and his name well his youtube name is preach and lead and he he just posted, this was 20, it said 20-ish hours ago, I do believe. And it says, the, the title of it is John Lindell, which is James River Pastor's name. I completely forgot. Uh, John Lindell slams Mark Driscoll for sinful behavior during sermon. So this means, so this means this would have been after... Mark had left and the, the conference was over. So let's watch this. This, I, I just looked it up. I think this would be good information because it's like, hey, what's happening now, right? So let's watch this and see what's going on because this actually might be the answer to my tinfoil hat conspiracy of it being a publicity stunt. So I don't know. Let's watch it. Okay, so we're going to jump into the Wednesday evening service that John Lindell is leading, and in this, he's eventually going to call Mark Driscoll to repent of five different things. Mark mentioned that he should have come to me, but acknowledging what happened is not the same as apologizing. Following our platform discussion, Mark and I visited backstage while Pastor Jabin Shabbat told Mark, I love you and I want to continue to be your friend. Mark said, well, I've just crapped all over your event. And I said, I still want to be your friend. Mark responded by saying that he loved our family and the church and would never want to hurt us. We suggested having a picture taken that would show us together. Mark insisted that he be the one who posted it first. And you can see it there, and it is obvious that he collabed us on the photo, so it's a post by Mark. The picture was posted shortly after it was taken. At that point, I was thinking that things were settled. When Mark returned to Scottsdale, Arizona, he sent me the following text at 5.10 p.m. Pastor John, it's Mark here. I just landed back in Phoenix. I feel like I'm watching a strange Netflix show I happen to be in. Thank you for 16 years of deep deposits and friendship. I love, appreciate, and respect you very much. My online team is deleting all negative. I'm not responding to anyone or anything, including text. I'm honored to talk about whatever, whenever. I'm genuinely praying James 1-5 for you and mean that sincerely. 
I deeply love you and your family and church family and appreciate. Oh, no, 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 no. Their relationship, their friendship is is ruined for sure. They're not, in my opinion, they're not going to be the same. And for Mark Driscoll to say, hey, let's take a picture together, but let me let me post it first. He is really trying to PR this whole thing. The, and for John to read text messages from Mark Driscoll on the pul like on the pulpit, that's so wrong. Their friendship is done, dude. There is no way that they're gonna be friends. So clearly we can see that this relationship is still in strife because he is slamming, well, making Mark Driscoll his sermon for a Wednesday night church service. This is, this is, this is crazy. Okay, um, he, he tells John, this should have been a clue to John that this wasn't all done, right? Um, John, or Mark says to John, I'm praying James 1.5 for you. James 1.5 says, now if any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to him. One of the things that, if you're praying for wisdom for someone, that means you disagree with them on the decision that they've made. Now, in prior videos, I've pointed out that I think, at best, it was unwise to have this performance in a Christian men's conference. At best, it was unwise. Because it's not just about the, the like, what you believed to be the case, and, and he goes into um, why he still stands by the decision to have Alex Magala, depart, you know, regardless of his past, why he stands by the decision to have him part of the conference. Okay, but you have to understand, it's not just what people, like the, the, the nature of what you're doing, it's how people perceive it. That's part of it. As a leader, you have to understand and consider how are people going to like see this and respond to this? Does this add any kind of value to what we're doing? I think... John is using the pulpit for the wrong reasons in this situation. There should not have been any trash talking, any exposing, any of that on the pulpit. He is using his, what he says is still a friend, using his example, using him as an example to to preach a sermon and that includes phone conversations and text conversations that is so wrong that's so wrong and then there's this phone conversation and i think it's important to see what is said to take it a step further mark had not only texted my son david but he called david on saturday night at 11 37 p.m and left this voicemail hey buddy this is driscoll i love you very much i feel like throwing up and crying I'm very, very sorry. I sent you some text. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say any of that. I'm not going to share any of that. I'm not going to do anything. I love you guys and guys. And I wish I was wrong, but I have my team quadruple check, check it unless they have completely messed up. This is a major crisis for you and James River. And so, yeah, just check your text thread. I CC'd your dad. I'll do anything I can to help. I'm not going to say a word. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to do anything. I've been the guy who is getting melted to the ground. The very last thing I want to do is be anything but a shield to love and protect you guys because I care very much for you and you guys mean the world to me. So I just wanted you to hear it from me that I'm very devastated, very broken heart. I love you guys very much. I'm for you. And if there's anything I can do to help without making things worse, I'm open to that. Know that I feel absolutely terrible and I'm praying. Yeah. And I just really appreciate the way you treated my son and son-in-law. You're a good man, David. I love you, buddy. Thank you. Mark called David again on Monday at 11.25 a.m., but left no message. Given Mark's response to me, I suggested that David should, as a courtesy, return Mark's call, which he did at 12.03 p.m. on Monday. On the call, Mark reiterated what he said in the voicemail on Saturday night. He ended those statements by saying, I am not wrong. He followed that up by saying the follow to Dave, the following to David, and David, this is as David remembers it. Number one, there is something wrong at James River Church. Number two, the leadership with you, your dad, and your brother is enmeshment. Enmeshment to Mark means that's a group of people, any group that is against Mark or that Mark doesn't agree with. Number three, there's something evil at work in the church. 
Something is different since the last time I came. There is a mixture of the sinful and the sacred. Number four, the reason that God is still blessing is because of the foundation of grace laid by years of Bible teaching. Number five, and I'm numbering them because these are statements David remembered. David, you need to differentiate. What Mark means by that is you need to separate yourself. And if you don't, James River Church may cease to exist. Number six, this is a word from the Lord for you. This may be the most important moment of your life. Number seven, Brandon is a broken man. The fact he could watch that guy in rehearsal and says, say nothing, says something is wrong. Something is wrong with him. He went on to accuse Brandon of a list of dark sins. But you need, number eight, to differentiate and become the leader of James River Church. This is your fulcrum moment. What kind of person says those things? Okay, those are- Y'all, this is so dirty. I thought this was going to be a short video because I thought it was just a few things and then done. But it is getting so much deeper than the men's conference. Their relationship is done. Oh, for 100% sure. Again, for him to be in the pulpit and to expose all of this shit that Mark is saying, I think that's wrong. There wasn't anything worthwhile to expose on the pulpit. It is simply, oh, this is what Mark is doing now. Okay, fine. I'm going to tell my congregation because all these people are with me and they're going to be against Mark. Because in the last video, his apology, he did say at the very beginning, I will do anything and everything to make this right. So he's, he, he, he's saying sorry and feeling bad of the delivery, but not what he said, which I agree with. They shouldn't have had that entertainment at a men's conference. That would have done away with this whole entire thing. Believe me or not, agree with me or not, something like that, I really don't think it's appropriate for a men's conference. Was it a dude with the shirt off? Sure. What value, right? Like, that's just what this guy said. What value? I, I mean, entertainment is fine, but at the same time, the monster trucks, the, the guns, the whatever, that is just trying to niche into what men, men really like. But you can do a whole men's conference without any of that. I think all that's stupid. But him, man, this is dirty. He's... This John, this uh, pastor is doing Mark really dirty. Again, Mark has his own controversial stuff. And I'm not saying he's innocent by any means. I'm not saying that, oh, poor Mark. I'm not saying that. But just in this situation alone, dirty, dirty, dirty. Major allegations, right? Those are, those are very serious allegations. And you would hope that somebody wouldn't make allegations like that flippantly. And he exposed Mark for deleting negative comments on his social media. So what does is, what is that do? It just makes Mark look even worse, which in this case, I don't think he looks that bad because he was standing up for what is appropriate and not appropriate for a men's conference, which if you're in the church, you'd probably agree with. But... I don't see John Lindell, I don't see him apologizing. I don't see him thinking, oh, maybe it was inappropriate. Shouldn't have done that. There was, there, there hasn't been anything like that. He is just fully exposing Mark and making him look like the bad guy. Now that I am thinking about it, my main question now is how old is John's son? Because if, if John's son is a minor then don't talk poorly about the church that you're affiliated with in your father. Don't talk, no, not to, a, not to a minor, not to, but if this man is like a grown man and they're friends and they're close and they're like, hey, that church is doing something, whatever, I think that is also different because if he is a minor and he's receiving these messages from Mark saying, you know, the church you're going to, there's 
bad stuff happening in there and you and your dad and what's going on is an enmeshment and you know you're against me things like that that is wrong that should not be does that does that make sense like it would be so different if that would be to a grown man versus that to a teen boy that would be the difference so i do wonder why Mark is commenting those things to the son and not talking to John directly, saying, hey, I really think there's stuff in that church that is sinful and wrong, and you and your son shouldn't be blah, blah, blah. Now that I am really thinking about it, it is very strange that he is talking to John's son and not so much talking to him, which a lot of these text messages and the the transcription of his voicemail, it is the, in my opinion, it's the energy of, oh, please, 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 like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, like, please don't be mad at me, I, I feel really sick about this, I really still love you, please, I'll do anything, a very, that, you know what I'm saying, that kind of energy instead of, like, this is what I believe, this is what I said, do with what you want. That's my belief. So it's a very strange energy going on. And it also makes me wonder if um, if Mark Driscoll saw and or heard things in the church that made him think that there's evil within the church or if it was just that entertainment. So I think there are a lot of things that we don't know happening. But y'all, I did not think it was going to get this deep. But right now, this is where John is going to respond via text message to Mark. And he's going to talk about how they're moving to step two in Matthew 18 and what is widely you know, considered the, the church discipline kind of uh, framework to follow. And I would agree on you know things that are relevant to it. This is what he says. You can imagine that when David told me what had been said, I immediately wanted to text Mark. At 1.33 p.m., I texted Mark the following, Mark, what in the world? Your call to David was ridiculous. I thought your plan was to, and I'm quoting his last text to me, to be saying nothing and doing nothing but praying. So which is it? Where is your integrity? At 1.34 p.m., Mark responded with this text. I did not call David. He called me. I left a voicemail days ago. What Mark had done at this point was so egregious. Attempting to tear down the leadership of the church. Attempting to create doubt and friction between brothers. Attempting to sow discord between a father and a son. It seems demonic to me. And honestly, it makes me very, very concerned for Mark. At that point, we moved to step two in the Matthew 18 process. Matthew 18, 16. But if he will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Within an hour, I called Dr. Jimmy Evans, the founder of Marriage Today, the Tipping Point podcast, and the founder and president of EXO Marriage. Jimmy Evans, if you do not know him, is one of the finest Christian leaders in the United States of America today. Just throwing this out there, I just looked it up. John and his wife, Debbie, this says, have two married sons, David and Brandon, and a daughter. Okay, so he is an adult. I mean, it doesn't make it, like, that much better, but I think we can understand saying those things about your parents to a minor and those allegations to a minor, is, in my opinion, is a lot different than a grown man. Doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it trying to bring strife in relationships doesn't mean it's right. I feel like it's better, though, that he's not a teen boy. I think we can all agree. <laughs> Jimmy had at one time served as a spiritual advisor to Mark. And saying, seems demonic to me. Wow, dude. This is crazy. At the pulpit huge ass church claiming the God that you asked to speak at your conference 
has some type of demonic influence. Those I sought counsel from said that Jimmy was very likely the only spiritual advisor that Mark would listen to. Dr. Jimmy Evans called Mark on Monday afternoon and Mark returned his call on Monday evening. Dr. Evans repeatedly told Mark Driscoll that he needed to repent. Each time, all that Mark would say is that Jimmy was a spiritual father to him and a friend that he loved. But Mark was unwilling to repent and still has not repented. As well. Okay. <laughs> I think it's really important to bring up this point. And still has not repented. Well, I think it's really important for us to consider who we invite to speak at our events. If you've not listened to the rise and fall of Mars Hill and actually considered just what it documents and what it displays during Mark's time at Mars Hill Church in Seattle and consider the fact that regardless of how many eyewitnesses, how many leaders who served with him, how many church members, how many people who have come up and said, this is my experience with Mark as a lead pastor. And they called him to repentance. They called him to make changes in the way that he led. And instead, Mark to this day has not publicly repented or acknowledged his part in any of that. Pastor John Lindell outlines the things that he's calling Mark to repent from. This is what he says. Mark, if you are listening to this message, we love you. And it's with a heavy heart that we are calling you to repent. Jimmy Evans has called you to repent. In the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, Mark, we call on you to publicly repent. We are calling you to publicly repent for refusing to stop the spread of lies regarding Alex Magala, a Christian brother. Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for sowing disunity in the body of Christ. Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for covertly trying to divide brothers and making false and slanderous accusations against Brandon Lindell. Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for trying to create division in the Lindell family, all the while saying you love us. Mark, we are calling you to publicly repent for trying to destroy James River Church through attacking its leadership. I fully agree with what this creator was saying, that you need to do your research on the history of these speakers. Because, well, he probably knows, but... Like we said in the beginning of this video, which was supposed to be super short, and it is not now, um, he has a past. He has a very, very controversial past. And from what this creator said, he still hasn't even acknowledged it, repented, or publicly apologized for the way that he acted previously in that church. So why then would you have him come to your church and speak with that sketchy of a past. You can, you can be a pastor and not do controversial things. <laughs> like, just like being an influencer. You know, we see these influencers all the time have super sketchy things or whatever. Like, you don't have to have a sketchy anything. You can be straight and narrow. You know what I mean? Like, you don't... It, he should have, number one, Mark Driscoll shouldn't have even been at that church to speak. We keep platforming Mark Driscoll and the way that he preaches, his leadership. People like him because he is super straightforward, but the allegations and the controversial stuff that he was in, he shouldn't be platformed anymore, in my opinion. Two, that guy shouldn't have been a performer, in my opinion, it shouldn't have been a performer at a men's conference. And even saying that, all of the other type of entertainment before a men's conference, it's all bells and whistles. It literally does not matter. It is simply getting the attention of the guys so they can come to a conference and learn about God. Okay, shouldn't have had that. And this shouldn't have happened. I truly think, which... I know John is going to you try to use scripture to justify him publicly putting on his platform and his pulpit. 
but this is dirty. This is all dirty, and it should shouldn't be happening. This is this is why people uh, uh, just a, a little reason of why people don't go to church. There's hypocrisy. There's nasty shit going on inside of inside of the church, capital T and C, the church in general. And this is dirty, man. Their relationship will never be the same. Okay, he doesn't he doesn't react to any more of that video. So we're just gonna we're gonna be done with that. So my opinions here, I don't think this is a publicity stunt anymore. <laughs> this has kind of proved it because he is now slamming Mark at a Wednesday night church service at his own church. And I think that is wrong. The ultimate debacle that we have here now is Mark not only not only not repenting and apologizing for coming out on stage and saying, hey, this is wrong, which he kind of apologized for that, but he apologized for how it was done and not speaking to John first. Secondly, in this debacle, is him trying to create strife within the son and the father and the leadership of James River, which this is where my questions now start to come about. If that entertainment was the only issue, then why is he attacking the leadership of the church? Why is he now saying, you know, there's demonic activity in that side of the church? There's negativity in the church and y'all have an enmeshment it's not of God like where did that come from because I don't think I now do not think it is just coming from that entertainment like there has to be more suspicious things going on in my opinion and for him okay just thinking about this I think John knows why Mark is saying that to one of his sons I think he knows why he said it, but to kind of shut him up into, hey, you did this wrong, you did this, I'll use the text messages against you. I'm going to put it on my platform. I'm going to say it at my pulpit so I can have my people backing me up. Maybe he knows like what's going on and Mark is like, I love y'all so much, but I saw some things that, that were not right and didn't sit well with my spirit, or biblically it was wrong. This is, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, defend Mark Driscoll. I am trying to have, like, a bird's eye view of what's going on, because there are a lot of unanswered things, and I'm not defending, I'm not defending anybody. I have questions, because him saying, oh, the enmeshment, oh, this is bad in the church, It seems very, very off. Well, it doesn't just seem like it is off. And I don't think it's just because of the entertainment. Like there has to be more things. Or if it was just the entertainment and he's really trying to ruin this relationship, like that's gross. Like that's weird. Why? Why are you trying to do that? So I think a lot of things are going to start coming out about this. Again, this was supposed to be a very short, oh, you got kicked off stage. Is this publicity or is it not? But we just got into a super rabbit hole of what is going on. Again, this is so, this is dirty, dude. This is dirty behavior in my opinion. And I don't think Mark Driscoll has to even come out on anything. And TikTok, social media, like social media in general, I don't think he's come out to say, anything at all uh this is this is weird this is weird something because he I, 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 if I believe right he did say something like James River is going to a, like a dark place or there's something in James River that is not good so I wonder if he did see something which with big churches I wouldn't be surprised if you have not watched the Hillsong documentary dude it shook me because that's the the denomination that I was, Assemblies of God. And for the praise team, we would do 90% of Hillsong songs. And we really looked up to them as a praise team. I looked up to them as church leaders, praise team, whatever. And now the main pastor who formed Hillsong was a child predator. Like, 
this stuff it's 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 everywhere and it's sickening and it's disgusting so i think of the worst in this which i hate but i wonder i wonder what's really going on with james river i think john lindell is publicly doing this so it'll be more shade and shame and controversy on mark's side versus what's going on with james river so i'm gonna keep an eye out on what's going on. If y'all hear anything and or see any other videos, please let me know. You can email me or DM me um, at Bethany Michael underscore. Everything's in the description box below. But I'm glad I did this video. I thought it was going to be short, but here we are in this huge dirt pile of church. Who would have thunk it, right? I appreciate y'all so very much. And again, go move your body. Go walk go lift weights. You've been sitting on your butt for way too long. Get up and move your body. It will thank you. You need movement in your life. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.